And, and of course, if any of you know, the uh, main problem with polyester as opposed to epoxy is, cause, is the fact that it's trickier to mix, but it just takes a little experimenting, right? So the first cloth I'm laying in here is just 10 ounce e, e glass. The reason I'm putting it in here is normally we'd put a colored covered cover cloth, like on this one, this is just, the black here is just colored cloth. But since I want us all to be able to see what's going on in the mold, I'm just gonna use this because it'll go clear. The next layer here, this is uh, 20 ounce triaxial knitted glass, which is gonna be a good portion of the strength of our part. It's a really good heavy duty fabric. The core, is 3 8 inch balsa, scrimmed and scored. The back, it's backed with a thin fiberglass, but I've also already put my top layer of this triax glued it on here so that it'll fit in better. And that way I can lay it right inside of here and it's uh, like wrapping the rails around it. Makes, makes the whole thing fit together well. And then this is going to be my top cloth. Goes over, you know, smooth out the wrinkles, make it all pretty, right? And that's that. The next layer here, this is Econoplied E. It's just a standard peel ply that we use. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, after the part hardens and we pop it out, all of the excess resin will gather on top of this cloth and you can just rip it off. It's real good for that kind of thing. Also, because skateboards tend to have a non-skid on the top, this will leave kind of a nice non-skid surface on the top as well. This stuff, this is a flow media. It's basically just plastic mesh. Nothing particularly special about it. Incidentally, learned something recently. The sealant tape is really good for tacking stuff down that might try to get away from you later. Because it's not going to hurt your bag. It's not going to hurt anything else that you plan to peel it off of. Just nice rubbery. Stick that down there. These are just spiral cut tubes. We're going to put one on the side that the pump is going to be on and the other is going to be on the side that the resin is going to enter. Along with, I just sat them down and I lost them again. Okay. These are resin infusion cuts. They have a notch that fits over the top of the spiral wrap. And we're going to prep these by adding a little bit of sealant tape around the top. And we'll show you why that's it. that is in a minute or two. If I can get this stuff off my glove, that'd be great. So as you can see, I've already prepped the edges of the table with the sealant tape. And I'm going to put a little bit over the edges of this, these spiral wraps because the sharp corners are kind of a puncture hazard. And that's the last thing we want. until I start measuring my catalyst anyway.
okay. So we've got all, everything laid down that's going to lay in there. And the name of the game now is getting the stretch line on there correctly. Don't mind the tape line, I took this off the end of a roll. The reason that this is cut so much bigger than the mold, because we're going to need a lot of slack in case we have to move it around later, we can actually just pick up the wrinkles and shift it a bit. Usually when we're laying this stuff, we'll go about halfway up the sealant tape, then come back from the opposite corner and come halfway up. This gives us enough slack to make a rabbit ear, which I'll show you in a minute. Now the nice thing about doing resin infusion is that until you actually start to introduce the resin, you can always go back and, and shift things around. You can, if you, if you have the foresight to see a mistake, you can change it before everything's finalized. Because once the resin's in there and going, well, kind of at the no turning back zone, So this is a rabbit ear. Gives us a little bit of slack to move things around when we have to. And it's that simple. Gives us a place to move things around. Let's take the tape off of this one. definitely want to avoid any kind of wrinkles going along the tape in the stretch line. <coughs> wrinkles usually mean leaks, leaks mean disaster, because they can mean bubbles getting inside of your project. Last thing you want. Not necessarily. Well, okay, last thing you want in this project. <laughs> Fortunately, this tape, I don't know if you, any of you have ever handled this sealant tape, but it's more or less just oh, tight. Like, so you can use this for so many cool things, and there's a Pay special attention when you're doing this to squishing down the corners. Of course, one piece, one layer laying on top of the other, you're going to have a little gap there. But since it's putty, it just squishes together. So no big deal there.
tell you, I had, I had kind of an incident last yesterday when we were rehearsing this. Didn't cut this uh, stretch lawn quite big enough. <laughs> And it came, I thought it would fit, but it came up kind of short, and I was really chasing leaks. Came out okay, but it scared me. I usually have really good luck with this project. That one was probably the scariest yet. Did you guys sell skateboards? We make them for fun. We sell the kits, the mold, and basically everything you see. Uh, mostly we sell them to like high schools and colleges, shop class. Well, let me tell you, I wish my school had it. <laughs> Wouldn't have been nearly as, as embarrassing to bring home as you know the napkin holders and the uh, uh, chopping blocks. <laughs> 